Slime bags detected. Who is ready for some ridiculously over-the-top, gratuitous 80s movie action violence? I was born ready. Let's do this. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, welcome. My name is Smith. I am from Gamers Heroes, and today I want to give to you our awesome Robocop Rogue City review. They told us not to use the official theme tune in the video, it's going to get us demonetized, but I don't care. You cannot play, review, or talk about Robocop without listening to that epic intro. It really sets the tone for one of the most authentic Hollywood to game adaptations I have seen in a very long time. R Robocop. I'm a big fan. We're going to cover absolutely everything in this review. We're going to go into the awesome fan service, the Auto 9 upgrade tech tree, the skill system, the story without spoilers, and the bugs as well. It's a new release. There's going to be something broken, right? What really makes Robocop Rogue City a Robocop game, other than the name and the title with Robocop, is the fact that it's got that the fan service is absolutely next level. These guys have done a lot of work and a lot of research in bringing the Hollywood world of Robocop's Detroit into the gaming sphere with just just overall respect and accuracy. To be honest, it's done really really well and it's done throughout. There's tons of characters from the movies that are in the game. There's one-liners, but there's more. There's there's t so many tiny little details that just left me grinning from ear to ear almost the entire game. And there's everything from mentioning the 6000 XUS vehicle, Robocop in passing mentions that Acapulco is a war zone. When he goes to the archives and looks at the computer screen, it's exactly the same user interface as the movie. Nuke's obviously present throughout the story. There's an interesting side quest based on Sunblock 5000, which is also from the movies most of these are just sort of tongue-in-the-cheek social satire from the films that are passing comments or passing events but bridging them over to the game just makes the whole environment feel realistic it feels robocop and they've done a really good job way of doing that even the way the car leaves the police station the way robocop leaves the police station and goes up the ramp is almost frame for frame identical i swear it's absolutely fantastic based on that alone ignoring the rest of the game which is actually surprisingly really really good this is a must-play game for fans of Robocop. If you've not watched the films in ages, watch them first and then dive in. You will not be disappointed at the amount of references you pick up. And these are all just dialogues and quests. You know, there's locations you can go to where Alex Murphy is killed. You can go into the OCP offices where one dude's shot out the window, the other dude's blown up by Ed 209. There's just so many of it from start to finish. And it's just, I don't know, it was the best part of the game for me by an absolute mile. Right. Honestly, just based on the fan service, I would recommend this to any Robocop fan, but it's a lot easier to recommend it to everyone else too because the gameplay is really good. It's really tight. There's two main elements to it. You've got the structured linear shooting sections where you're going through hallways and hospitals and burning buildings just destroying bad guys. And then you've got the more open-ended larger areas where it's more about exploration and doing actual police work. It's really well balanced throughout. The pacing is perfect. Every time I was getting a bit tired of doing investigations or speaking to, to witnesses and whatnot, I had a 30-minute scene where I was blowing up bikes and shooting robots. It's really well paced. Um, the combat system itself is very, very simple. You do get upgrades through your skill system, which we're going to go into a bit later. But other than that, you're just running through levels with your trusty Auto 9 absolutely destroying enemies. It doesn't evolve very much as you go through the game, even with the skill system upgrades, but it's just satisfying. You know, you are Robocop. You can just walk through these halls, destroying most of these guys and not really feeling any issues. It does get a bit more difficult later, and I'm not saying it's an easy game by any means, but it's just, it creates that perfect combination of making you feel powerful enough to be Robocop, but vulnerable enough to know where you're not immortal. Yeah, alongside the Tech-9, you've got shotguns, machine guns, heavy machine guns, grenade launchers, there's an impressive arsenal, but honestly, it's all about the Auto 9 for me. That gun is just crazy fun with the upgrade, so I stuck with that almost the entire game. One thing I will have to say, while you as Robocop don't evolve too much as you go through the game, you do get some skills and abilities, as I've said. The enemy variety is really good. You start off with just regular street thugs that you can pop off in the head. A few of them will wear a helmet, which makes them a bit harder. As you go through, you'll get crazy guys with sniper rifles. You'll get guys coming at you with grenade launchers the best enemies are the guys on the bikes these guys are just ripping around the street driving at you shooting at you with smgs you can shoot them you can blow up the bike you can grab them off the bike and throw them into walls 
Every single scripted combat scene just felt like an 80s action movie. The violence is over the top. The amount of enemies is ridiculous. The area and environment destruction is just completely unnecessary, but it all works so well and it comes together to make something that's just, it's just good fun. No rubbish, no fills, no filler, just good fun. On the complete opposite end of the scale, you've got the more traditional police work with Robocops running around, typically downtown. It's the same map. It opens up a bit more as you go through, but it's the same map you visit sort of two or three times. And you can you can stumble upon crimes in progress. You can help the citizens out. You can ticket someone that's parked in front of a fire hydrant. You can turn up and find a body and help with the murder investigation. Um, the investigation system is familiar. You know, you're using Robocop's RoboVisor. You're scanning the environment, you're finding clues, you're chasing down suspects, you're taking statements. It's all very simple, it's just mostly dialogue and small interactions, but it works really well to separate, you know, the adrenaline fueled combat sections with these more passive, realistic, and I guess more personal moments to Robocop and Alex Murphy as they interact with the people around them and deal with the citizens on the street. There are choices and consequences through the game, there are multiple endings, so what you do does matter. Um, it's not an illusion of choice here either. The, the impact is there. You can see it as you sort of progress towards the last hour or two of the game. And I have to say, without spoiling anything, the last hour is just incredible. The action is non-stop. It's absolutely fantastic. I wish I could show you it, but I don't want to spoil it. But it's really good. So just touching on the story real quick, and it will be really quick. I hate story spoilers and reviews. All you need to know is whether the story is good or bad. Anything else is going to ruin something or other for you. So the story is decent. It's not fantastic. It is very predictable if you've watched the first few movies. Um, but then it, you know, it's set in the same universe. It doesn't feel lazy predictable. It's, you know, they're obviously trying to tie it in very closely. So obviously you need to have certain elements from the films that are present in the games. Um, it takes place between Robocop 2 and Robocop 3. So the nuke drug epidemic has kind of taken its grip on Detroit. OCP still doing their evil deeds where they're trying to rob all the good people of Detroit of their houses so they can rebuild this massive dream city. All the while, poor Robocop Alex Murphy is having that inner battle of man versus machine, whether he should help the people of Detroit and overthrow his creators or side with the evil conglomerate OCP. It is funny how these big, greedy corporate company stories from 30 years ago are even more relevant today. That is a bit strange. The story is great. If you're new to Robocop, you don't need to know anything about it. You can jump into this as a standalone story and will enjoy it just as much as fans of the franchise itself. If they want to fly into a war zone, I have first class tickets for them. Moving on to the actually really impressive Auto 9 upgrade system. Now, this is something that is persistent throughout much of the game. When you're exploring, when you complete certain missions, you'll be given circuit boards. You can put these circuit boards into your gun and they will unlock a certain number of abilities once you put chips in to unlock those specific abilities. So you can see here, there's a bunch of stuff going on. The yellow ones are abilities, the green nodes increase your weapon damage and so forth. I was sort of halfway through the game and everything felt like a real bullet sponge. It was really starting to kill the mood for me a little bit, but I kind of neglected my Auto 9 upgrade. So I've got this one here and this one I use for most of the game. It basically turns the Auto 9 into fully automatic that never has to reload. And you stack the weapon damage as high as you can and then everything that you had shot is just popping off and exploding. Um, it's a really good system. It's rewarding. It's It definitely makes it feel like you're actually progressing in the game without just getting all these new guns. So it's, um, and I think it's quite simple. I think initially it may be a bit overwhelming. Give it a bit of time. Pick up a few circuit boards and you'll have a good time with this. Don't ignore it. It is vital for your progression. Next up, we'll dive into the skill system. Um, I enjoyed this. It works really well. There's a bunch of different skills in the game. Each of the skills have sort of pips and nodes that increase something or unlock something. Um, it's kind of like a the, the game kind of holds a gun to your head. You've got deduction psychology down there at the bottom. These unlock new conversation options. They allow you to find secrets in the game world. So it's kind of like that Bethesda vibe where you don't really want the skills, but you don't want to miss out on the stuff either, which is disappointing because the other skills, focus, combat, they have some really cool combat abilities in it. So I would have preferred not so much forcing you down the deduction and psychology tree if you don't want to miss stuff, but at the same time, you do have the choice. So, so it's a system that didn't really work for my own personal FOMO, but maybe if you don't care or you use guides, you might be able to get a bit more fun out of this than I did, but it's solid nonetheless. Get ready for a meltdown. I really hate this part of reviewing games. I want to play the game the way the developers meant it to be played, but with so much pressure from the top, pushing games out, releasing games, everything comes with bugs nowadays, and Robocop Rogue City is... No exception. Very early on, I did reach a bug where I was unable to interact with the door that I needed to progress with the story. I had to reload, which cost me about two hours of playtime. Really frustrating. I did replay that bit six or seven times, which was felt like a waste of time, but the bug never happened again. So I think this is a really rare one. 
Um, and you can't save yourself. You have to rely on auto saves and checkpoints, which is really frustrating because every time I close the game down for an hour to go and lunch or whatever, I'd come back and I'd lose five minutes because the auto save wasn't recent enough. So not a bug, but annoying nonetheless. Um, as I was exploring downtown, a lot of the side quests I'd already completed sort of started again. The people were there with the same dialogue lines, but the quest never started itself. Um, certain enemies that you throw just disappear, not into like the pulpy bloody mist as they usually do, just vanish entirely. Um, overall, ignoring the progress blocking wanks, as I said, I really did try and replicate that and I couldn't, so I'm going to just assume that was a random anomaly. Um, they're all very, very minor, a couple of areas of frame drops. It's way better than the demo, which I had some severe performance issues with on PC at least. It's way better than the demo, so overall, expect some minor things, but there's nothing too major here that's going to ruin your day, unless you run into the same progress blocker I did. Overall, Robocop Rogue City gets an 85 out of 100 from us here at GamersHeroes.com. It's a fantastic love letter, not just to Robocop fans, but to 80s and 90s kids that miss those old school, over the top action movies. If you've watched this far in the video, which is probably about three of you, we really do appreciate it. I know this is a long one. We're still working on our review template here. So if you've got any feedback, please do post a comment down below. But otherwise, I hope you guys enjoy the game and I'll see you in the next one. Take care now.